Hey guys, welcome back to How to Roll Dice. I'm Josh, and for today's quick little video, I wanted to show you, or more so because I've already showed it to you, talk about how I made this D&D sort of play screen here. Uh, it was actually very easy and relatively cheap considering all of the use that you could get out of it if you are an avid RPG player. Um, I said D&D, but obviously you could use this for just about anything. In fact, you don't even have to use it for RPGs. You could just have it on for some kind of an ambiance if you have a little bit of a gaming room you're working on or a nice gaming table that you tend to hang out at with your friends. Um, this table, or I should say this sort of video display here, only took about $120 to make. Now, I will put in a caveat here that some of that requires a little bargain hunting on your end, but it really shouldn't be that difficult because the technology that goes into building this does not need to be cutting edge unless, you know, you're going for that, in which case, sure, you're going to spend more money. Um, but as far as the electronics that are involved, this was an older television that I have lying around. Um, this is a, I want to say a 50 inch 1080p, not 4K, not UHD, nothing like that. LCD, not LED. Uh, so definitely not cutting edge, 1080p LCD screen. I think it's about a 50 inch that I had lying around that I had no use for. I had replaced other TVs in my house and I just didn't have a place to put this. It's too big. There wasn't a room that needed it. Um, and so I had it lying around. And on top of that, I had a spare Chromecast, not a, not a, not a Google TV or a Chrome TV, whatever they're called, not the $60 one, just the little $30 circular puck that goes into the back of these. They've gone through several iterations over the years. I want to say they're on Gen 4, Gen 5 of the regular standard Chromecast nowadays, but that's all you need. You could buy one of those brand new from Best Buy or wherever for $30. Uh, it doesn't come with a remote or anything, but you won't need that. You're going to stream all of these live maps directly from your laptop or your tablet or your smartphone. <clears throat> so you have the actual Chromecast and then the television. If you don't have a spare television lying around, obviously most people won't. You can pick this sort of level of television up, maybe not quite 50 inch, but maybe like a 36 inch or a 40, a 45 inch for about 50 to 80 dollars on craigslist or ebay all you're going to look for is an lcd or a plasma if you want to go plasma although plasma does have a little bit of an issue with burn-in so if you're going to be having the same map on the screen for a long period of time probably don't want to go plasma but something like an lcd screen somewhere three feet and up so 36 inch on the diagonal and up this is quite large you you don't have to have a screen this big as you can see i've got some models placed on the screen here and i do have it playing right now but i don't know how well you guys can see it at this angle. I'll give you some B-roll around the box in a minute. But uh, you don't need a screen this large. You can see these models here are spread out quite a bit and they're only taking up. I mean, if you slid them all the way to one side, they're only taking up half of this screen. So you really don't have to have a 50 inch display. That's a bit excessive. But I have this large sort of room that I play in and I like to do things a little bit excessive. But you could definitely do this with like a 36 inch screen somewhere around there. Again, 1080p is all you need. I'm sitting right on top of this thing and the resolution is perfectly acceptable. It's certainly going to be better than any you know map that you're going to draw out unless you're some, you know, college educated masterclass artist, in which case, why are you using a digital screen? You should be drawing all your maps and painting them in lovely watercolor. Um, so you need the screen. You can get that used around 50 to 80 bucks online. You want to look for one with a, thl a thin or slim bezel. Again, there isn't a lot about it that needs to be high end, but you do want a smaller bezel. Otherwise, you're going to lose some sort of available screen space uh, in your overall box size to that bezel. This has about a one inch bezel. This is an Insignia TV. It's, it's not even like a big brand or anything like that. Um, and that one inch bezel is plenty small enough so that it's not super distracting or it's not eating up a lot of the overall space that I would normally have to play on. So you've got your screen, 50 to 80 bucks used online. You've got your Chromecast. Maybe you have a spare lying around. If not, they're 30 bucks brand new. Um, and then the actual wood to make the box. These are standard uh, framing two by fours. They're the, basically the cheapest wood that you can get at a Home Depot or a Lowe's or a lumber hardware store of any kind. Um, you're usually going to find them in uh, two by four by eight, meaning two by four, the cut of the wood, eight foot, the length of the board uh, pieces. I want to say those are going to range you between $4 and $8 each, depending on where you live. Because of the sizes that you're cutting, the two ends and the sides, uh, you really only need maybe two of those uh, two by four by eight boards. You're definitely going to have some leftover if you're smart with your cuts. So you can save that for other projects. That's what I always do. That's why I always have wood lying around. I did have some older two by fours, but I actually ended up buying new ones just because I didn't feel like sanding all of the junk off the outsides of the two by fours. They had been out in the weather by my shed. Um, sometimes that's a look, right? Sometimes you want that. Sometimes you want old barn boards or you want, you know, wood that's been sitting out, maybe not necessarily rotted or warped because that's not going to hold well together 
together, um, but some wood that's got some dinge and some dirt and some age and some wear on it. If that's the theme you're going for, I mean, that could certainly be fitting to something like a dungeon-esque game room, right? Uh, but I chose to go with new two by fours. It cost me like a combined $12 to get all the, the two two by four by eights. Then I'm gonna show you in a minute, but on the back of this, there's actually a piece of quarter inch or maybe it's half inch plywood. Nothing crazy over the top, nothing super dense, just something sturdy enough that you can actually bolt the TV to. And that's because you wanna be able to lift this box off of the table when you're not using it. Unless of course you're recessing it into the table, which is sort of gonna be my next project. But assuming you're just doing the box that you wanna be able to move on and off of the table when you're not using it, you want to bolt the TV to the backing of the box. So the back, the underside of this box is basically a piece of plywood that is framed to these two by fours. So there it's one solid piece. Um, and then the TV itself actually bolts into, or I should say the, the TV is bolted to the piece of plywood. And with this TV in particular, that's using M6 machine screws. If you look on the back of your TV, it's going to tell you specifically what type of screws, or you can look up your TV online, what type of screws you need that you would normally use to mount it to a frame to put it on a wall anchor or to mount it to studs or anything like that. If you're gonna mount your TV to the wall, you'll attach the mount generally with machine screws. Knowing the threading and the size on those machine screws is what you need to buy some spare machine screws from your local hardware store. Again, this is gonna run you between five and $8 for these screws. You're only gonna need four of them. And you're gonna run those through the back of the plywood into the back of the TV, drill some pilot holes because machine screws obviously don't go straight through. Marking where the screw holes need to be drilled that was a bit tricky. Um, I used a t uh, tip or a trick that I saw online a while back, which is put the machine screws into the back of the TV, into the screw holes, and then put a little drop of paint on each one of the screws and then carefully lay the TV down onto the piece of plywood. So lay it into this frame once you have it all assembled. Then lift it up very carefully. Try to do it as smoothly as possible so you're not dragging the screw paint across the plywood. And what you'll end up with are four dots on the piece of plywood exactly where the screw holes need to be. Then you drill the holes out roughly, you know, a touch larger than the actual size of the machine screws that you're going to be using. You pass the screws through into the television and boom, your TV is bolted to the back of this lovely box that you've built. And now you can move it on and off the table and you can lean it up against a wall and you don't have to worry about the TV falling out of the box and cracking on the floor or anything like that. Uh, one of the nice things about these TVs as well that I didn't mention, they're sort of from this sweet spot in a transitional time of technology where they're not super heavy like older TVs um, in that they have that huge bubble back like CRT or, or rear projection televisions used to have. Um, they're, they've got some weight to them. They're not quite as light as the thin TVs that you'll have nowadays, but they're very manageable. And even once you add this wood box to it, it's very easy to move this on and off the table. I can do this by myself with this 50 inch screen. Um, if you had two people, you could move basically anything. They don't weigh that much. The other nice thing is because you've sort of moved on from that era of glass screens, CRT TVs and rear projection televisions, although most of those had a plastic sort of film front to them, um, they're relatively durable. So it's perfectly fine to like lift this out while you're working on it and let it slip in. It, it might clunk a little bit. It's not gonna smash. There's no glass components. There's still circuitry inside side, but it's very minimal. If you've never opened up a television like this, not that I'm recommending you do, um, but if you ever have, or if you haven't, I should say, inside of this TV behind the actual screen, there's very little electronics. There's two small circuit boards about 12 inches, maybe six, eight inches across, one here and one here that work together to manage the display, all of the controls, the IR stuff like that. Uh, there isn't a ton of breakable tech inside of these things. You have to hit the screens pretty hard. I mean, I have absolutely no fear moving models like this around on this uh, on this type of screen. Don't drag them because even though it's plastic, you can score it and scratch it if there's bits of grit on your model. But I mean, uh, anything upwards of I would say a quarter pound, half a pound, I'd be perfectly comfortable putting on this screen and knowing that as long as I put it down without any brute force, it's going to be fine. Um, so this is just in the window, the, like the right window of type of screen to use for this. Not overly expensive, not overly huge. It's got just the right features that it needs. It's durable. Um, and it happens to be a great price point for this type of project. Um, as far as actually assembling the box, other than the machine screws that are gonna go through the TV, through the plywood in the back uh, to mount it to the box, the box itself is just just a, a simple framed box. You put the boards, um, you know, put 
your two end pieces across your two side pieces so they overlap. So remember, you're not just gonna measure the frame of your TV, you're gonna measure your long edge. And then when you measure your short edge, you're going to add the width of your two two by fours, which are not actually two inches across. That's a bit of a misnomer. They're one inch and three quarters across. So you're gonna take one inch and three quarters, you're gonna multiply it by two because you're gonna have two boards that your end board is going to be overhanging. One and three quarter times two is three and a half, if I have that correct. Um, yeah. So three and a half inches is what needs to be added to your end board uh, on top of the actual measurement of the end, the short edge of the TV. And that will give you enough overhang to create this box shape. Then you're just gonna take some solid screws. I like to use T25 deck screws because they're much harder to strip than a standard uh, Phillips or flathead screw. They have a great grip to them. Most of the time when you buy them, they come with a T25 bit for your drill. You can get them in a box of 150 for like 15 bucks and then you have them for like 10 projects. They're great. Um, you take two of those on each end of these boards and you drill them from the sides uh, uh, from your short boards into the ends of your long boards. Now, if you had um, a jointer jig, I think it's called a jointer jig, that allows you to tap angled holes from your end board into your sideboard, you would use that. I don't have that, um, so I just went straight in. Whenever you're drilling into a piece of wood like that that's so small and not super thick, there's a chance that you're going to split the wood, especially if you're using aged wood, it's very dry. Um, there's a chance you're going to split the wood. Uh, in that sense, to avoid that, you want to pre-tap the holes. If you have a tap bit, again, this is, uh, a very cheap thing that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. It costs like $5. If you don't have one, just use a regular drill bit and drill the hole out one size smaller than the actual screw that you're using. Um, I wanna say I used two inch screws on this um, and they held great. And that's gonna be plenty of force to hold this box together. Cause again, you're not putting a ridiculous amount of weight in this. It's not banging around. It's not being yanked in different directions. It's just gonna be lifted on and off the table many times, which is fine. Um, the last thing that you could, you might want to do that I did um, is when you mount your, your plywood to the bottom of the box, and again, you're just going to lay a piece of plywood cut to the dimensions of the box that you've built, and you're going to screw it up into the box from the bottom. I like to do three screws on the long side, so something like here, here, and here, and then two screws on the short side, so again, here and there, um, all the way around from the plywood up into the underside of these boards. That's gonna hold your backing onto the actual frame itself. Um, then you've got your box built. One thing that you can do is take a larger drill bit if you have one, um, um, or maybe before you mount the plywood, actually take a saw and just cut one corner off of that plywood where you can run the power cord from the TV out of the box and then off of your table to a power cord, uh, a power outlet so you can actually plug the television in. If you actually seal the entire back of the box, there's no way to get the outlet, uh, to get the plug from the TV out the back of the box. You have to run it over sort of like the edge wall of the box and that doesn't look as nice. So do yourself a favor either before you mount the plywood, um, cut a corner off enough so that you have a bit of an air gap there that you can run the cable out of. Or if you have a larger drill bit or a hole tap, go ahead and punch out a hole big enough to fit the head of the AC cord through. Remember, keep in mind, it's not just the thickness of the cord. That would be easy. You actually have to fit the head of the cord through. You could, if the cord comes off of the TV, simply drill a hole big enough that fits the actual um, port of the cord that connects to the television. Usually you'll have a figure eight or a flattened figure eight shape AC cord for these types of televisions. That's a bit smaller than a standard wall outlet plug. So you could make the hole small enough so that that fits and then you pass it through the box and then to the TV as opposed to going out the other way. Um, but if whatever works for you, point being, give yourself an option to get the cord through the box to the television or from the television out through the box. Um, after that, you're basically good to go. You might have to do a little bit of leveling to get the TV to sit flat flush or as flush as you're comfortable with with the top of the uh, two by fours. If you want to sand all of the wood down beforehand, you can. I didn't bother with that because this was just kind of a fun project to see how it worked out. And I was kind of surprised it worked out so well. But one corner or one side of the TV was sitting a little lower inside of the plywood. It was about half an inch down, whereas the other side sat almost flush. And that's due to the shape of the back of the television, normally not something that you have to factor in when mounting a TV to a wall or standing it on its stand. Um, so I just took a small section of two by four and put it under the TV to brace up that side of the television and that actually leveled things out pretty nicely. 
Um, other than that, all you have to do is set up the Chromecast, which will automatically walk you through how to do that when you plug it in for the first time, and then uh, stream or cast uh, live maps directly from your phone or your tablet or your laptop to the Chromecast, and they'll display on the screen. Now, there are tons of these on YouTube. If you've never looked, I'm not going to call out specific channels. I found one playlist of these where there's something like 177 live maps, both with and without grids. Um, some games you like with, some games you like without. It all depends. This one, again, I don't know how well you can see this, but this one has a one inch by one inch grid on it. And because the display resolution of the screen and of the actual map was factored in by the creator of the map, the one inch grid actually comes out to almost exactly one inch on this display. So it's perfectly functional for actually playing a game that utilizes a grid, or you could just use one that doesn't have a grid. And again, this is not just for D&D, this is for any RPG that you might be playing. It might even be for, again, just to have ambiance in the room. It might be something that you, uh, you know, mount this box or stick this box off to a side of the room on a shelf so that it, it actually does kind of mount the TV when you're not using it. And you could plug it in over there and you could use it as a regular television. And then when it's time to play a game, you bring it over to the table and lay it down. And now it's your digital map screen. If you wanted to go a little beyond to protect the screen, you could get a thin piece of plexiglass or some type of like thin thin, clear polymer or not polymer. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and cut that to the size or have that cut to the size of your box to lay that over the television. But I feel like have adding that air gap between the screen and where the models are actually going to sit creates a bit of a, an odd uh, distracting illusion where the models look like they're floating over the terrain. And at a certain angle, it can look like they're not quite lined up with the spot where they're supposed to be. Having them sit right on the screen, again, as long as you're a little careful with them and not dragging them around aggressively, uh, really does make it look like they're sitting on a regular map. And of course, you've got animations going on. The trees are blowing. The birds are flying around. Things have shadows. There's a waterfall on this map that's casting a rainbow as the water runs down the river. There is sound. Um, another nice thing about using a, a cheaper, older TV as opposed to something like a monitor is that it will have speakers built in. So I have the sound turned off on this right now so that you guys aren't picking it up in this video. But you can hear the rushing of the water. You can occasionally hear tweeting birds. You can hear the wind you know, sort of like brushing through the trees. It's very nice. It's, it's a really nice addition if you're trying to go above and beyond for your next RPG game or whatever you plan on using it for. Um, but anyways, yeah, something like 120 bucks, $30 Chromecast, 50 to $80 used television. That's about 200, uh, sorry, 1080p. Um, go for an LCD if you can. Plasma would also cut it. Look for a smaller bezel. Um, obviously, make sure you get a remote or buy a universal remote or whatever. Um, so there's like 100 bucks right there. And then something like $20 in wood and some hardware, maybe a couple small tools if you don't have them. But but about 120 bucks to build this. And it's certainly gonna get the job done. Um, give it a shot, let me know how it goes. Uh, I, I'm curious to see if you guys can think of any like cheap, affordable improvements that could be made on this. Like I said, you could sand the whole thing down. Uh, you could attach it with dowels if you wanted to do dowels instead of screws because you didn't want any outward visible hardware. You could actually, on the inside of each one of these boards here, you could line up and then drill in something like a one inch uh, pilot hole for a dowel. And then you line your dowel up in there with some solid like level three gorilla wood glue and then hammer them together with a soft rubber mallet so they would be like permanently connected just as strongly as they are with screws but you'd have no visible uh, hardware on the outside no drill holes or screw heads or anything like that that's an option if you wanted to get really fancy you could like dovetail joint this entire thing but now you're getting into like proper woodworking um, but anyways cheap, affordable, very effective, very efficient, fun little project that I am glad I undertook and can't wait to use for the first time. And I'll let you guys know how it goes when I do. Um, but other than that, I uh, hope you guys are doing well. I had an amazing time at Gen Con. I bought something like uh, $2,000 worth of games, um, games and gaming gear and gaming accessories and RPG books and expansions and all kinds of stuff. I will do a video on that soon. Maybe, um, maybe sometime this week. I do have a business trip tomorrow and Wednesday. Today's Monday, so Tuesday, Wednesday this week. I will be in Cincinnati for some work, but when I get home, I will try to get another video out. Likely that's going to be about all the Gen Con stuff. But yeah, I hope you guys are doing well, um, and I'll see you real soon. Have a good one.